The 2024 NFL offseason is upon us. We're just over two months away from the 2024 NFL draft. Each team has their own path they're going to take in the draft, and it's time for me to determine what those are. In this video, I'm going to run over the team needs for every team, determine what paths they have, and ultimately select what path they should and what they likely will take. I'm Chase Keller, and welcome to the ultimate guide to the 2024 NFL Draft. For dummies, enjoy. The New England Patriots are last in their division for the first time since 1999 and they have never been last since the division went to four teams. And they also desperately need a quarterback for the second time since Tom Brady left the franchise. That's likely their direction in this draft, whether that be trading up for their guy or settling for the third quarterback, which is likely either Drake May or Jaden Daniels. They also could use wide receivers, especially after they had possibly the least contributing wide receiver core in the NFL. And the needs on offense continue as we head into level two. Offensive tackle and tight end are solid needs as well. On level three, I have wide receiver again, any offensive line depth and cornerback. So here are the two paths that New England can go with. Path one, draft either May or Daniels at pick surround that quarterback with the better surround sound. Path two, draft Marvin Harrison Jr. at three, keep building the offense with an offensive tackle and a wide receiver, and hope and pray that Mac Jones plays well. If I'm New England, I'm not hesitant in my selection of path one. They need a quarterback so bad, and with a new coaching staff, a new start at QB would be great. The Jets come into this draft with a couple options at pick 10, and that option determines the rest of the way. Positional needs are pretty broad, as their first level consists of offensive tackle, and that's it. The second level of needs is huge though. Tight end, wide receiver, interior O-line, and defensive tackle. Third level is small yet again, all around O-line and quarterback. On top of that, they only have a first and a third in the first two days. So many scenarios can operate here. Path one, Brock Bowers falls to 10 and the Jets take that shot. Their third round pick is more difficult, but they go with an offensive tackle that is somehow an F. Path two, the Jets go with offensive tackle at 10 with whoever is available between Olu Fashanu, Joe Alt, or Talisa Fuaga. Third round, they take wide receiver. Path three, they go with tackle at 10 again, but they trade up into the second round to get a better wide receiver to help Rodgers in his recovery from injury. No third rounder here. When it comes to the path they should take, path two is the most likely. Ideally, they would want Olu or Alt, but as I said before, Fuaga is not a bad option by any means. Miami comes in with not a lot on their plate. Positional needs are already limited at the first level of things, and even the second level they don't need to worry about until late day three and early day four. Level one of needs starts with linebacker and tight end, which makes the first round extremely difficult for them, but I do think they will reach for one of these positions. No matter what, they are one of the biggest trade down candidates in the entire league. Level two of needs consist of all around offensive line and interior defensive line. To wrap up the needs, level three consists of defensive back and offensive line again. Path one, the Dolphins dump Taron Armstead and take offensive tackle at 21 before jumping to their biggest need in linebacker at 53. Path two, reach for a tight end and get you Tavion Sanders, who I'm surprised isn't being talked about more. Get a guard at 53. Path three, reach for linebacker and get Edron Cooper, then get guard again. Two reaches that PFF gave an F, but isn't that the point of a reach? Anywho, I disagree with everyone saying that the Dolphins don't need a linebacker. If I'm Miami, I'm going with path three here. That's all I gotta say. And the AFC East champions, the Buffalo Bills. Another team with not a lot of huge needs, but they are definitely there in my opinion. Let's begin. Level one of needs, cornerback and wide receiver. I don't like Tredavious White as a starting corner anymore, so that's why corner is that number one need. Level two, overall defensive line and safety. Stack up on the forefront and begin to replace the older guys at safety. And level three, the depth needs. Linebacker, O-line, and overall defensive back. How does this translate to pads? 
Path 1, get cornerback at 28. It'll likely be Ennis Rakestraw or Quinion Mitchell, but Kool-Aid could fall to this point as well. Afterwards, get wide receiver at 60 and defensive tackle at 99. Path 2, flip the wide receiver and the cornerback, which would likely result in Buffalo getting Troy Franklin or Keon Coleman. Corner at 60, D-line at 99. Then path 3, trade up for a premier corner or wide receiver, whatever you are feeling. That only gives Buffalo a higher first and the same 99th. In this case, I went with Terry on Arnold, but Brian Thomas Jr. is also possible. 99 is wide receiver. In my opinion, I like the cornerback path more than anything. This gets a new outside corner and gives you the opportunity to trade White out of Buffalo. All right, I've laid the ground down, so now let's move a little quicker. Into the AFC North we go, beginning with the highest pick there in Cincinnati. They have huge needs on both the defensive line and the offensive line, especially if they can't bring DJ Reader back this offseason. Level 2 gives us tight end and probably wide receiver, assuming one of Tyler Boyd or T. Higgins leaves. Then the level 3 needs here are just for depth concerns, as cornerback and offensive line are there. Path 1 gives them a Marius Mims at 18, who I mocked in my most recent draft. Check that out, Bengals fans. Then pick 49 is defensive tackle and pick 80 is wide receiver, depending on who leaves. And path 2 gives them Byron Murphy the second to 18. Promise me, it's worth it. Picks 49 and 80 are offensive tackle and wide receiver respectfully. My favorite path is path 1, as they get a top-notch right tackle to replace Jonah Williams. The Pittsburgh Steelers come into play after another 500 season, and that situation is more interesting than the last time they took a quarterback. Do they jump up for one, or do they settle for Kenny Pickett? Well, QB is not in their top needs in my opinion, as only offensive line and cornerback settle up there. Quarterback finds its way into the second level of needs alongside wide receiver and another O-lineman and possible positional selections include defensive tackle and linebacker. So let's look at some scenarios. Path 1 gets them a franchise offensive tackle at 20 as they select Georgia's Amarius Mims or Washington's Troy Fautanu. That follows with corner and center. Path 2 gives them the rising Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon, the successor to the Tyler Linderbaum impact. Afterwards, they get a corner again and flip around center and tackle. For path 3, they snag a cornerback, whether that be McKinstry or DeJean or whoever falls to them. Afterwards, they get an offensive tackle and take a third level need in linebacker in the third round. So where do they go? In my eyes, path 2 is the most intriguing scenario here. I'm just currently unsure on if JPJ is worth taking that high. For the moment, I like this path. The Baltimore Ravens are kind of straightforward, but once free agency makes its impact, this could change substantially. For what we know now, here's what they need. The first level of need sits with corner and wide receiver, two positions that I think have great depth in this draft class. Afterwards, they sit with edge and defensive line, along with offensive tackle, especially if both tackles step away. This list ends with running back and defensive line again. They have a lot of talent, but this offseason is going to be crazy and these team needs are bound to change. Path 1. Go the wide receiver route. This could get you a top-notch guy like Brian Thomas Jr., Ladd McConkey, or Keon Coleman. That follows with corner and defensive tackle. Path 2. Go the cornerback route. This includes TJ Tampa, Kalen Carson, and Ennis Rakestraw Jr. possibly. Afterwards, it's wide receiver and defensive tackle. And that's about it. I've been a believer in take the best receiver or corner, and Brian Thomas Jr. is probably better than TJ Tampa. I just gotta finish my scouting. The Browns are last in the AFC North because they just don't have a first round pick. Let's run through them. They have big needs at defensive tackle. That's my only level one need because I think they need that desperately. Afterwards, it's wide receiver, linebacker, and offensive tackle at level two. Then running back, defensive line, and safety round out the overall needs. But yeah, they desperately need defensive tackle, which is why they take defensive tackle first in path one. Hopefully Chris Jenkins is at 55 for Cleveland, but I don't think he will be. Other than that, they could go wide receiver, linebacker, or offensive tackle at the second pick. But what if they don't go with D-tackle? 
I would take one of these top wide receivers given how great this receiver class is, then take defensive tackle afterwards. It's obvious what path I want them to take, let's just move on to the AFC South. Beginning with the Tennessee Titans, they disappointed, fired their head coach for some reason, and now have a weird situation for next season. In my eyes, it's not great. Let's preview their draft plans. They desperately need offensive line help, so they're the only positions in level one. Then you got wide out, probably running back, cornerback, and more O-line help in level two. Then there's tight end and offensive line yet again in tier three. So in all three of these paths, they go to the offensive line with seventh overall. It's the depth that changes here. So Olufashanu, Joe Alt, Talis Fuaga at seven, and they follow path one with A.D. Mitchell, Path 2 with Jonathan Brooks, and Path 3 with Mike Sainer still. It depends on the positional value really, but with no third round pick, do not be surprised if they reach for a prospect they really want. In the end, all of these are fine. I'm going to fall on A.D. Mitchell because I love him as a prospect and he mirrors D-Hop so dang well. The Colts have several opportunities here depending on how the offseason goes for them. I'm going to go with the situation that Michael Pittman Jr. does not get re-signed. Let's begin. Their top needs are wide receiver and cornerback, both positions with solid starters but could definitely use more youth. Afterwards, both edge rusher and defensive line alongside tight end are level 2 needs. Then finally, we have offensive line and that's in level 3. I'm going to make 3 pads here. Path 1-6 with wide receiver at 15, probably getting Brian Thomas Jr following his cornerback and defensive tackle. Path 2 goes with cornerback at 15, and that's probably Quinion Mitchell or Terion Arnold. It's going to be a tight race, and hear me out with Path 3. Trade way up to get Brock Bowers at tight end. This discards their second rounder, so they likely go with more surround sound in the third. Set Anthony Richardson with a great receiving core. Honestly, I just wanted to make things interesting with Path 3. I like the second one the most as they get Juju Brents, Quinion Mitchell, and Kenny Moore as their three starting corners. The Jaguars miss the playoffs. What? Their late season defensive collapse puts cornerback and defensive tackle as massive needs alongside wide receivers since I don't think they should re-sign Ridley. Then there's interior offensive line and safety in tier 2. Level 3 has one need with edge rusher. Because of their top notch needs, I see the Jaguars trading down. In path one, they'll snag a cornerback and get a new guy to line up with Tyson Campbell. That lands them this haul with receiver, defensive tackle, and center. Path two, they go with defensive tackle followed by cornerback and guard. Path three gets them one of the best receivers in this class in Brian Thomas Jr. followed by defensive tackle, center, and corner. Path two is one that I would love to see the Jaguars take they can trade down for one of the top defensive tackles though and have more draft capital if that helps too. How about Houston? They looked fantastic in 2023 and they should continue to go up from here given the youth on their team. So let's stack it with more youth. They should look for a defensive lineman, whether that be edge or D tackle. In the level two of needs, they have wide receiver and cornerback. And in level three, we're looking at interior offensive line and safety. Not a lot of needs all around for this Houston franchise. So let's give them two pads to work with. Path one snags them that defensive tackle, getting them Johnny Newton. But if I was Houston, I like to trade down for this situation. Don't trade down if it lands you Murphy or Newton though. Anyways, here's the depth. Path 2 actually gets them a wide receiver, and I believe they can get a nice edge rusher later on. Again, trading down would be nice. With that being said, they are large trade down candidates in this draft. After the receiver, they go with corner and D-line. Path 1 is easily my favorite here, especially if they can get Jerzon Newton. And finally, in the AFC, we have the AFC West. We kicked this division off with the Chargers as they disappointed all around this year. That leads them to have bigger needs at receiver, cornerback, and defensive tackle. Even in level two, there's tight end, offensive tackle, and running back. 
That's six positions, some crucial in the top two levels. They repeat at defensive tackle, interior offensive line, and linebacker also in level three. Path one gets them the common Brock Bowers pick. A lot of drafts have this, and the possibilities continue to grow. At 39, they go with receiver, and at 69, they go with running back. In path two, they go with wide receiver. Could be Neighbors, or Odunze, or maybe even MHJ if they get lucky. Following that is cornerback and offensive tackle. There is also the possibility that they go offensive tackle at 5. I think this very much depends on the availability of Joe Alt. Then there's receiver and defensive tackle following. The possibilities seem endless for Los Angeles, but out of these opportunities, I like path 1 the most. Denver Broncos. The team I love most, but wow have they disappointed year after year. Their needs follow. Level 1, quarterback, edge rusher, and corner. Level 2, wide receiver and defensive tackle. Level 3, offensive line and tight end. These needs are concerning, but I want to highlight the quarterback need. They have the surrounding set, but the quarterback is a huge hole. Besides, Fans have been saying that they are a quarterback away for years. So they take a quarterback with this first path. Somehow they got Jaden Daniels with pick 12, but Michael Penix Jr. or Bo Nix are more likely to happen. They only have one more pick, and I think they go with wide receiver at 76 if they go QB at 12. Path 2 gets them that needed cornerback 2 to line up alongside Pat Sertan. In this case, it's Quinion Mitchell. Then for path 3, they land a wide receiver. I recently mocked Romo Dunze to Denver, but they'll get lucky if it ends like that. Afterwards, they get Gabriel Murphy. They should go for path 1 in this case. I do like them getting quarterback in this class, and if it's somehow Jaden Daniels, that's even better. Las Vegas finished as the second best team in the AFC West, yet still got the 13th pick. Big opportunity for them. Let's see what they can do with it. Level 1 needs are quarterback and cornerback. Following these two pretty massive needs, they have offensive line and defensive line bolstering up the trenches. Then they can get another corner and a wide receiver with the third level of needs. Can PFF stop having Daniels fall constantly? Vegas gets him in path 1 along with Jordan Morgan and Jerrion Jones. For path 2, they go corner, selecting Nate Wiggins. Afterwards, they bolster up both the offensive and defensive lines. And for path 3, they get that top-notch defensive tackle at pick 13 and go for a different idea later on. They could get quarterback at 44, and they do go with Penix. Afterwards, they go Patrick Paul. Path 3 is the one that would be the best for this franchise. It's not the most realistic, though. Ugh, they did it again. And their draft idea is pretty straightforward. Let's dive into that. Wide receiver and offensive tackle are their two biggest needs. Especially with how great this class is at both positions, they could really use one of them. Level 2 gets them defensive tackle and safety, and then level 3 is a bunch of depth at positions they don't need starters for. In path 1, they take the wide receiver route. As I mentioned earlier, I love A.D. Mitchell and the Chiefs could really use him. Then they go with defensive tackle and offensive tackle. As for path 2, they get their next right tackle in Jordan Morgan. Big time pickup for them. Afterwards, they go with defensive tackle and wide receiver. It's really going to come down to what position is a bigger need, and to me, that is wide receiver. So path 1 would be the direction I would go in if I was Kansas City. <sighs> that was a lot. Onto the worst conference with the debatable best division in that conference. The NFC East was a roller coaster this year, and it all begins with the second overall pick in Washington. Obviously, quarterback is their biggest need, but edge rusher is also a pretty desperate need for them. Level 2 of needs gives us offensive line and linebacker, and level 3 is another edge rusher alongside tight end, cornerback, and wide receiver. This is pretty straightforward. They have five picks in the first three days, so pay attention. Path one involves no trades and quarterback second overall, but following that is edge rusher, center, linebacker, and corner. 
This just fell in order this way, but it could go in a different order depending on how much Washington values positional value. Then for path two, they use their deep range of picks to trade back up into the first round and get Laiatsu Latu. So they get two first round picks to fill their first needs, and then they capitalize with linebacker at 65. Honestly, I love path two for Washington. They not only get a new franchise quarterback, but also a great edge rusher, filling up their needs very quick. <laughs> then we got the New York Giants, a team that kind of needs a quarterback, but probably won't take one in this draft. The quarterback position kicks off their tier one needs, but wide receiver and offensive tackle also take up that top level. Level two gives us cornerback and interior O-line. Finally, level three includes wide receiver again, edge rusher, and linebacker. So let's go from most likely to least likely here. Path one, offensive tackle at six. One of the top two offensive tackles will be available here, and even if they aren't, Talisa Fuaga likely isn't a bad selection. Path two, wide receiver at six. There's a possibility they take Odunze, but if Neighbors is on the board, I'm pulling that trigger. And path three, trade up for a quarterback. New England is likely your option to trade up here, and this does get you one of the top three guys. All of these paths are intriguing, but I like grabbing an offensive tackle and forcing Evan Neal to play guard. <laughs> then there's the Philadelphia Eagles, who started off so strong and ended the season horribly. A lot of needs poked out, so let's talk about them. Level one, defensive back. Either cornerback or safety with their first selection would be nice. Level 2, wide receiver, linebacker, and offensive line. Their O-line especially took a hit this year, and if Kelsey retires, it's time for that new center. And level 3, edge rusher and defensive back again. Let's look at these scenarios. Path 1, go with Lad McConkey to play in your slot and pack the defensive side of the ball behind him. Path 2, Go with corner at 22. Rakestraw likely won't be the pick, but Arnold, McKinstry, DeGene, Mitchell, and Wiggins were all selected in this mock. Followings are shown. That's all I got here, but I will say that the Eagles are massive trade-up candidates if they get up and get a top-tier corner. Look out for that. So I like path two the most if they can get one of those top five corners. Trade up for one if you have to. And the NFC East champions, the Dallas Cowboys, come in with not a lot of needs and a big opportunity to trade down. But they do have a level one need, and that is interior offensive line. Only one interior guy is worth it at 24 anyways. Afterwards, it's running back, cornerback, and wide receiver. And level three, defensive line and linebacker. Let's check out the scenarios. Path one, take Graham Barton and move him inside. He has experience at center, so he could 100% move back there in Dallas. Afterwards, take running back and corner. Then path two is a trade down situation. Doesn't have to be this exact one, but you get the idea. The picks in this scenario are Zach Frazier, Jonathan Brooks, Tez Walker, and Cam Hart. Please just trade down Dallas. Your biggest needs have bare minimum value in the first round. Do it. All right, time to move on to the NFC North. The Chicago Bears owned the first round pick for the second year in a row, and last year they traded it, but this year they'll likely keep it. The top needs in Chicago are defensive line and interior offensive line. Afterwards, quarterback makes its way into the second level alongside defensive back. And finally, running back is a level three need. So path one is mocked the most. Caleb Williams to Chicago. Some fans may like Fields, but would you pass up on a potential generational talent to keep him for another season? It's then followed by cornerback and wide receiver. Jamari Thrash is a huge name to watch for, Chicago fans. Then in path two, the team trades down for Marvin Harrison Jr. and rides with Justin Fields. They then take an edge rusher at nine, but instead opt for a defensive tackle later on. And path three, Activate 2023 Houston Texans mode. Throw a generational haul at New England to get both Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. And the haul is so much that they have no other selections until the end of the fourth round. Path three would be elite, but do you want to give up that much capital? 
I'm taking path two if I'm Chicago, but that doesn't mean I'm not torn on riding with Fields or going for Caleb. Minnesota comes up here with an intriguing situation. Do they go the quarterback route or not? It's not their biggest need to me, as cornerback and defensive tackle are their level one needs in my eyes. Following that is quarterback, running back, and edge rusher. Then in level three, you get linebacker and offensive line. Quarterback is where they go for path one. Again, PFF has Jaden Daniels super low on their big board, so he's going to fall here be the first team to go running back afterwards. Path 2 includes slacking off on quarterback and going with defensive tackle. There are really only two guys who could go this high, those being Byron Murphy and Jerzon Newton as mentioned earlier. And for Path 3, go get your favorite cornerback and follow it up with a possible quarterback in the second round. I like Path 3 here, especially if you can get JJ McCarthy in round 2. Cornerback is a big need, and getting a top guy would be amazing. Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers went over expectations this season, and a lot of people are on that train now. So how do they follow that season up? Level 1 of needs is defensive back, both corner and safety. But if you want to surround Love, fall back to level 2 with offensive line and running back, or go defensive tackle. An edge rusher and wide receiver are level 3 selections. So path 1, take that corner. PFF makes it really hard to get anyone but Rakestraw, but I'm sure one of the top 5 guys will fall to Green Bay. Follow that with safety, defensive tackle, running back, and offensive tackle. Path 2, trade down to secure even more day 3 selections and go with the top safety. Look at all these selections you get here. And that's really all I got. I originally liked the offensive tackle idea, but now it's only to get a franchise left tackle and move on from Bakhtiari. And the path they go down, path one. Get that good cornerback addition and roll with the punches. Then there's Detroit, the NFC North champs. This wasn't too shocking as a lot of people saw this coming, but in terms of the draft, they surprisingly have a good chunk of needs. That begins on level 1 with cornerback and edge rusher, the two most crucial defensive needs. Afterwards, the defense continues with defensive tackle, but we branch into the offense as they do need a wide receiver and an offensive line piece. Then for level 3, we're only looking at safety. So for path 1, Detroit gets a corner. And yes, at this point it's probably Rakestraw and not one of the top 5. Following that with edge, defensive tackle, and offensive guard. Path 2, take an edge rusher, snag a corner later on, and take a similar depth path. So for these two pads, I like path 1 more because of their need at corner, and Rakestraw is a pretty good fit here. <sighs> 8 teams remaining. Moving on with the Atlanta Falcons, they have a fun draft coming up. Why is that? Quarterback is their biggest need, and being at pick 8 won't help. Edge rusher and wide receiver are also up there. As for level 2, you got defensive back and defensive tackle. And in level 3, add on to the defensive line depth and also look into the offensive line. So path 1 will give them quarterback. It won't be Jaden Daniels, but Atlanta fans just act like it is. Following that is wide receiver and edge rusher. Then for path 2, stray away from drafting a quarterback and go with wide receiver. This could be Malik Neighbors as shown, but more than likely it'll be Romo Dunze. Somehow they do land Bo Nix in this path, so cheers to Atlanta fans. And path 3, they go with edge rusher at pick 8, which is shaping out to be Dallas Turner. Path 2 is easily the best one here, just given that Bo Nix fell down to them. If they go with quarterback in the offseason though, I would prefer path 3. The Saints were originally division favorites before the Bucks ended up taking it. New Orleans comes with a pretty big need in offensive tackle. This is their biggest need by far and will likely be the route for the NFL draft. In level 2, defensive tackle, wide receiver, and tight end are the needs here. And then for level 3, they got edge rusher, quarterback, and safety. JC Latham kicks off path 1, and this has been my pick for a while now. Even if they don't want to replace pending this early, Latham can play inside as well. They have one other pick and they go wide receiver, then only one other path and that's just not taking an offensive tackle. 
it turns out to be Johnny Newton, and they go with a tackle later on as Jordan Morgan falls to pick 45. Not a lot else to say about the New Orleans Saints, I'm going with path one easily. The division winners in Tampa Bay come into the draft with a good amount of needs, but one of them surprisingly is not quarterback. Level 1 consists of edge rusher and corner. I really like the opportunities they can get at both of these positions. Level 2 of needs is a lot though. Running back, wide receiver, tight end, and interior offensive line. All offense. And then level 3 is quarterback, linebacker, and D-line depth. Path 1. I've mocked Jared Verse a lot, but with him going up PFF's board, I can't get him. You get the idea though. Take an edge rusher in the first round and fill up with corner and center. Path 2. Get the corner instead. In this path, you're just switching corner and edge rusher. And for path 3, get a stud wide out if Mike Evans leaves. It'll be a bad grade for now, and again, this is only if Evans leaves. So this leaves us to a decision. With the way everything fell here, I like path 2 the most. If a guy like Jared Verse is on the board, go with path 1. And yeah, the last team to talk about is Carolina since they don't have a first round selection. Very bad spot to be in. Their first priority in the draft should be to surround Bryce Young, as wide receiver and offensive line fall under top needs. Then there's tight end, running back, and edge rusher in the second tier of needs, and level 3 as another wide out with corner and defensive tackle. So yeah, surround Bryce Young. Kick that off with a wide receiver for path 1. Just take the best available and hope and pray. Then take Christian Haynes or somebody like that. Path 2, go tackle at pick 33. There are a lot of top heavy tackle options this year, so this is not bad at all. Staying in Carolina and taking Tez Walker is also appealing. Just because of the sheer amount of round 1 and round 2 offensive tackles, I would go with path 2. I don't even like Tez Walker, but if he can stay in Carolina, that would be pretty cool. And on to the final division. Beginning with the Arizona Cardinals, they're going to continue rolling with Kyler Murray and that leaves them a straightforward draft. Level 1 of needs includes wide receiver, edge rusher, and corner. Level 2 includes offensive tackle, defensive tackle, and linebacker. And level 3 includes quarterback and safety. They have so many needs and they need to address as many of them as they can. So that starts with wide receiver in path 1. PFF thinks MHJ to the Patriots is a lock, but even then, Malik Neighbors at 4 is really not a bad pick if that's the case. They follow that with Graham Barton and a lot more. Path 2 is a tradeback situation where they get even more depth to fill up all of their desperate needs. They go cornerback and wide receiver in the first round, followed by all of this. These are the only two paths I have, simply because them staying at number 4 is a straightforward selection, and I like them staying at 4 in this draft if it means they can get one of MHJ or Neighbors. The Seattle Seahawks. Oh, what an interesting team. I've had one opinion grow on me these last few weeks, so hear me out. Tier 1 of needs begin with defensive tackle and quarterback. I'm not sure if I trust Geno right now, especially after his fall in 2023. Level 2 gives Seattle needs at edge rusher, interior O-line, and tight end, and level 3 is linebacker. Let's begin with the defensive tackle route for path 1. In a best case scenario for Seattle, no defensive tackles go off the board yet and they get the one they want. In this case, it's Newton, cause Murphy went off earlier. Afterwards, go with guard and edge rusher. Then for path 2, they go with the quarterback selection. People might not agree with me, but don't worry, PFF doesn't either. And for path 3, they get the rising center in Jackson Powers Johnson. They fill up their depth accordingly. I like path 2 obviously. I like the risk they take and I think it's a potential low risk, high reward situation. The Rams are another sneaky potential quarterback team, but instead of me liking it like I do with the Seahawks, I don't like it with the Rams. Level 1 of needs gets them corner, edge rusher, and linebacker. A bunch of defense all around here including in level 2 where they have safety, but also offensive line. 
and level 3 includes defensive tackle and wide receiver. So path 1 gets them that corner, this one being Terion Arnold. Their best corner is Akello Witherspoon and they could really use someone better. Afterwards, they snag linebacker, edge rusher, and offensive guard. Path 2, edge rusher. Dallas Turner, Laiatsu Latsu, and Jared Verse are all worthy selections here. Then it's linebacker, corner, and center. Then there are no linebackers really worth 19 when they have these other needs, so there's only these two pads. As for the one I would take, I like path 2 more, but I also love the get of Edger and Cooper in both of these. And finally, this long ad video is capped off by the team that lost the Super Bowl. They have very, very straightforward needs, so this won't take long. Level 1 is only offensive line, tackle, guard, and center. Following that in level 2 is more O-line, defensive back, and wide receiver. And then after that is more offensive line and edge rusher. Not a lot of needs here. And I literally only have a single path for the 49ers. Well, I have two, but they follow the same idea. Path 1. Stay at 31 and take Tyler Guyton. They follow with a mix of defensive backs and offensive line. Then path 2 is them jumping way up to get one of the best offensive tackles in this class in Olu Fashanu. This leaves them with two more picks instead of three, and that lands them a wide receiver and an offensive guard. Path 1 is the safer way to go about things. Obviously jumping up would be huge, but play it safe after you just made it to the Super Bowl. Well, that wraps up this video. What did you think? Did your team take the path that you wanted them to take? Let me know in the comment section below. Wait, are you not subscribed yet? Well do it now. I release content like this all the time and would really appreciate your support. I'm Chase Keller from Chase Keller Journalism, and I will see you all next time.